Everywhere I land, a woman appears. Look. So she is a comms officer in the planet Pacifico Del Rio. She's someone's mum in fine time. She's an ambulance. She's a portrait in 1813, and the list goes on. Planet Slug, she's a Slug mom. Planet Varsite, she is a griffin. The fivefold configuration, she is a bleed. So she's everywhere. She must be here. So I'm hoping that Unit can find her and analyze her. She's always middle-aged, about so high, 60, slim, fair hair. What? What? What is it? And right on cue. This is when it changes. This is when the whole world is- This is a good but frustrating episode. So anyway, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank. Here we are, the legend of Ruby Sunday. So this is a two-part finale. Uh, normally I would wait till the full thing came out, but we really have anything else planned that's finished. And I figured let's sort of wrap this up and we'll just sort of play catch up later. And my phone goes off in the middle of this. Now, you know what? We're keeping it. We're keeping it. So, the doctor is finally ready to figure out who this mysterious woman is who keeps showing up in different um, planets and different times. Like, who is this woman? And so they go to Unit, and for some reason, Rose Noble is there? I don't... I don't know why. Um, Kate's there, which is good. Um, there's a new scientific advisor? We're just going through them to Russell's time. Weird. Because that means what? Because... Um, I think they went through two in his 2005 to 2007 era. Is that, is that right? No. It is... In his tenth, in the tenth Doctor, I think they went through two. I might be wrong on that. Um, Osgood, of course, and then two here. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So as they go through, it's like, okay, this woman we need to look for her, and it turns out, yeah, we've already been watching her. All right. Um, and everyone, the Doctor thinks for a moment this might be his granddaughter, and I'm like, are we bringing Susan in, Susan? Susan, the adorable cinnamon roll? Turns out we didn't. But, anyway, what ensues is sort of the mystery as to who this person is and her technology, which they never really go into exactly what that technology is. Um, but it sounds important, so they send Mel in to go undercover, you know, to figure out what's going on, and all they found out is Susan Triage is a very nice person. That's kind of it. At the same time, though, they want to use um, UNIT, uh, UNIT's technology, to try to figure out what happened to Ruby on that day when her mother left her at the church on Ruby Road. And so using a time window and the old VHS tape of that day, um, it seems like that's what sort of set everything into motion of this all going to pot. Overall, this episode is more set up to the big reveal. And... Really, if you look at it, it is, in part, a lot like the episode Utopia from Russell's era. And why I keep sort of going on that Russell really just sort of likes to try to rehash a lot of his other ideas. Granted, I would be, I think that's a bit disingenuous to say that suit that this episode here is totally similar to Utopia, because it isn't. Yeah, sort of, in some ways, but at the same time, not. Like, it's not that big a deal, ultimately. Really... What it is, is the Doctor's trying to figure out exactly who Susan Triad is, and he's really thinking that it might be his granddaughter. And this is sort of where I get my first hang-up, is the Doctor's reasoning for not seeing Susan. Like, well, I'm a messy person, and, you know, I, uh, I live a dangerous life. I'm like, okay, and? Like, this excuse would have worked, um what, maybe in his first incarnation? But he's repeatedly gone and gotten other people involved in his life. So I don't quite see how that works as a reason. Um, and so when the whole reveal, as what's going well, on, not really the reveal, but when using the time window to explore what's going on on, what, what happened on Ruby Road, starts to go south, like not really fast, but when it starts to go south, it goes south. As something is apparently trying to come out of of the TARDIS, or rather, it's this huge black smoke that comes in, and one of the unit um, guards 
is like aged for like hundreds if not thousands of years so yeah and then it all just sort of turns out this is all one huge trap by Sutek all right and I'm not gonna lie I don't try to really guess what a lot of this is where this is all going forward like what big bads coming in because if, if for another reason that I'm usually wrong it just sort of I think kind of ruins it people other people I think do a better job of that they look through everything like oh, if you look at that there who's that who's that in the background oh, red fingernail red fingernail polish oh, it's Kate I'm like okay um, so Sutek Sutek is an old enemy from a fourth doctor story called Pyramid of Mars and to be fair Sutek is this is a big deal um I didn't think we'd bring him back, of all people, but, you know, I think when Russell went through, like, well, I already mentioned the Guardians, let's see here, um, and let's see, I think I mentioned, or we did the Trickster, uh, let's see here, did the Toy Maker, I brought Muse again for some reason, um, I could do Eldrad, but, um, no, we can't do Eldrad, um, <laughs> we should do Eldrad, um, I wouldn't have picked Sutek. Um, just because Sutek feels like such an isolated character in, its, in himself. But then again, the audios have done him. Uh, I think he's got two audios. One with the Fourth Doctor and one with Bernie Summerfield. Which I think also involves the Seventh Doctor, which is why I got that audio. So, it's it's not um, totally out of character for... Or at least out of... Out of reason for Sutek to come back. But... I don't know, like, the problem is, we've got the reveal, and it's a great um, reveal how this all sort of becomes, ho goes horribly, horribly wrong, where a simple investigation into a possibly dangerous mystery, well, or a dangerous mystery, becomes so much worse. Now, the problem is, I don't quite know where this is going, and it gets a bit ridiculous, like, the whole, the letters becoming um, the actual name, Russell did that before, uh, and again, in Utopia, with, you know, uh, you know, in, uh, what was it, Gridlock. Was it Gridlock? Yeah, Gridlock. When the face of Bill goes, Doctor, you are not alone. And then Utopia with Professor Yana. You, Y, R, A, not, N, alone, A, Yana. There we are, the master. There we go. <laughs> and here it all just sort of keeps going. I think the... the Biggest one was, of course, with Harriet. Harriet Arbinger. They're like, oh, Arbinger. I'm like, okay. Bit much. Bit much. So the question is, does it really matter who Susan Triad is? Probably not. Susan Triad might just be the avatar for Sutek. Um, who Mrs. Flood is, who seems to know who the TARDIS is, that's another question, too. Um, could it be Susan in reality? Could it be... Ruby? Could it be Ruby's actual mom? We don't really know. So that's a whole issue itself. I think it is going to turn out that that has been Ruby's mom, and she's just sort of been um, looking out for Ruby this way. Um, I think that'll be fun. A fun sort of twist. A bit obvious. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. Um, like, really, the reveal... like. Everything leading up to the reveal, to me, was sort of what made this episode worth it. I don't feel like there's been anything significant to Mel being here. Um, Ruby's mom is brought in to unit, like her, her adopted mom. And I thought, like, this doesn't really lend anything to the story. Same thing with Rose being here. Rose has offered nothing to this episode, so I don't quite get that either. Um, the Doctor... His reveal about Susan, well, his feelings about Susan, I felt were a bit much, as well as the whole idea that apparently he doesn't have children, but he has a granddaughter. So this is sort of lending more to the mystery of Susan, because we don't have any actual proof that Susan is the Doctor's granddaughter. She just sort of says it, and he doesn't contradict it. But, you know, why would you? Why would we commit to this? I don't know. I would, because it makes sense. There's no reason to not say that and to me it, it feels more like Russell sort of embracing what the Thomas Child does for the doctors like well 
um, we've freed the character from the continuity that has sort of been established, not really properly explored. So more than likely, nothing will come from the idea of whether or not Susan is or isn't um, the Doctor's actual granddaughter. All right? Probably nothing will come from that. But now he's able to sort of free that up to add more mystery, more mysteries, more intrigue. He's trying... Well, I think he feels like he's trying to add more mystery, and the best way to add the mystery is to add the doubt. I, I guess. Um, it feels like he's trying to turn the time of child, child idea into the Cartmel Master Plan, or at least what made the Cartmel Master Plan work. And the thing is, so the Cartmel Master Plan uh, would, uh, was an idea brought in the Seventh Doctor's run, we believe in the Seventh Doctor's run to a head, at least. With the idea that, you know, the Doctor is more than just another Time Lord. Alright? And with that in mind, the whole thing is the Doctor knows. But we, the audience, and Ace, our audience surrogate, doesn't. And so through the course of the story, we're supposed to uh, sort of return that mystery to the Doctor. But the fun, what made the Carl Master Plan work is that it never came to fruition. Like, we never got to know for certain who the Doctor was, but we knew the Doctor knew. And he's like, why would I tell any of you any of this? <laughs> if I haven't told you now, I'm not going to... If I haven't told you by now, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, no, you must be crazy. All right, so it goes off. And it starts, you know, teasing more and more, more mystery, more intrigue. It is what it is. The time this child sort of reveals the big answer. Uh, and even worse, the Doctor doesn't know. It's sort of been like part of my retcon of the time this child is having it be that the Doctor... Not first of all, isn't the Thomas Child, but also that the Doctor knows who the Thomas Child is. I said it should have been Susan, but you know I'm trying to you know you know grasp a bigger, more intricate tapestry, uh, and Chibnall was just trying to shake shake the boat, and Russell's trying to have some fun with the idea, because he's he's determined to not you know retcon that. If I was showing her, I would retcon it. Um, but not throw the entirety idea out. I think there's some merit to it. But... I just... No. No. Um, like I said, the, the end reveal is great. I love the scene where the TARDIS, like, changes color a bit. It's just a bit... Like, even in frame, it looks just a bit off. The TARDIS, for the first time, looks scary. All right? It's never supposed to look scary. Um, usually, you feel concerned about the TARDIS, like something's wrong with the old girl. But now it seems like something bad is coming from the TARDIS so there's that um, my question has been where's the other doctor you know this barber generation where, where's where's David Tennant <laughs> um, to me this feels weird some people have suggested that in the teaser for Empire of Death that that is the 10th doctor in the TARDIS um, but other people point out that that's more likely Harriet a Harbinger um both of which seem plausible to me, but I don't quite see the point. I, well, you know, to be fair, the episode hasn't come out yet. Uh, but to me, I just want this other regeneration, this other incarnation of the Doctor that shouldn't be here to have a proper official send-off and to go away. It's kind of it. It's kind of all I'm saying. Overall, I think it's... I keep saying it again. This episode is all right. It is, but it is as some, people, as some people pointed out. Like there's a lot of setup here, and not much else. The whole how the doctor feels about Susan really is only going to have the payoff that it turns out it actually is Susan. All we found out about Susan Triad is that she's been having dreams about all the other places that the doctor's seen her. So that's kind of it. I think what the doctor thought might have happened was she used the chameleon circuit. Like at some point, Susan got in trouble. And had to go into hiding with the chameleon circuit. So in other words, her Time Lord essence has sort of been masked and whatnot. We also don't know if Susan is a Time Lord or not. But, you know, let's confirm it here. And so if she's hiding herself like Professor Yana did, or the Master did, or the Doctor did in the Family of Blood, then those dreams would sort of come up. Or that she would be having dreams about her other life. But the Doctor here goes straight to it. Like, you've been having dreams about a daughter named Lindy. And, you know... Or in disguise, which I thought might have been Gallifrey, but it's definitely supposed to be from Boom. So, I don't know. Um, but more than likely, this isn't Susan. Because if it is, she's not doing well either way, and I'd hate to think that Russell brought Susan back just to kill her off. Um, that would just be so bad, Russell. Don't do that. 
don't do that. Don't don't be the worst. But at the end of it all, I think we're just kind of done here. So really, at the end of it all, we'll know how we really feel about this special when it all ends. So um, with that in mind, let's bring this to a close. If you knew the bug thing, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the fun algorithm things, and I will catch you all later. This is Bucket Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.